Number 32. Assume the helium neon lasers commonly used in student physics laboratories have power outputs of 0.25 milliwatts. Letter A. If such a laser beam is projected onto a circular spot one millimeter in diameter, what is its intensity? So first of all, we have to know that intensity I, don't confuse it with current, but intensity I is going to be equal to power over area. Okay, power is measured in watts, area is measured in square meters. So they gave us the power in the problem, right? They told us a wattage, but they told us in milliwatts. So simply take that value, multiply it by 10 to the minus 3 to convert that into watts. But now we have to find the area over which that power is being applied or supplied. So here they say it's circular and they give us a diameter and it's in millimeters, right? So we know that the area of a circle is pi r squared. What's the radius? Well, it's half the diameter. So if this is one millimeter, then the uh, radius is going to be 0.5 millimeters. But you know, we don't need that in meters. We need it in, excuse me, we don't need that in millimeters. We need that in meters. So multiply it by 10 to the minus three. But don't forget to then square the radius, okay? And here we go. So this is going to be 0.25 times 10 to the minus third, divided by now parenthesis, pi times 0.5 times 10 to the minus third squared. Close the parentheses, and we get about 318, 318 watts per square meter. That's the intensity. So that takes care of letter A. What do we got now coming up for letter B? Well, it says that it says find the peak magnetic field strength. So now that we know the intensity, how can we find the peak magnetic field strength? We need a formula that relates the two. So we know that this formula, that the average intensity, and that's what we're going to assume we calculated, okay, uh, is going to be equal to um, the speed of light multiplied by the peak magnetic field squared divided by two times, where's the two? There it is two times the permeability of free space. So if I want to find the magnetic field strength here, what I need to do, I do a little cross multiplication, bring the permeability of free space out, bring the two out, bring the C on down to the bottom, and square root both sides so that you can get rid of then the square. See how nice and quick that is? And there's a division there, right? <laughs> so the maximal magnetic field strength here is going to be the square root of two times this 318 average intensity that we found multiplied by four pi times 10 to the minus seventh, that's a constant, divided then by the speed of light, which is also another constant, all right? So let's see what we get. So second square root of three, no, two, times that answer, 318.3, blah, 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 times then four pi, all right, times four pi times 10 to the minus seventh, divided then by three times 10 to the eighth. And we get a value of about 1.63 times 10 to the minus sixth. And that's in terms of Tesla, all right? Those are the units. And that takes care of that. And then letter C, oh great, find the peak electric field strength. So now we need in a, well, so now we can actually do this in a couple of ways. You could uh, use uh, this formula over here, if you'd like, okay? to find, you know, the average intensity, you could find then the peak electric field strength. Or you can use this formula over here. I'm gonna use that because it's a lot easier, all right? So this says that the peak electric field strength divided by the peak magnetic field strength should equal the speed of light. Since I wanna find the electric field, just cross multiply that on out, all right? And then simply plug in. So this is going to be three times 10 to the eight multiplied by our magnetic field strength that we just found 1.63 times 10 to the minus six. And what you should do is you should do all the substitutions and kind of prove to yourself why that kind of just, everything just cancels out. That would be a good thing to practice. So three times 10 to the eight, multiplied by that value, we get a value here of about 490, I guess. 490 volts per meter, okay? Those are the units of electric field. Guys, thanks so much for tuning in. I appreciate it. I really do hope this helped. And if it did, give us a hand. Like, subscribe, maybe even tell your friends. We got tons more videos out there for you, especially if you're taking either mathematics or chemistry at the moment. Download the OpenStax books, find similar problems that you might be having if you're not using the OpenStax books, and then you'll have all of your answers answered. Guys, take care.